Okay. Well, we don't have our chair here or our vice chair, but we do have our former chair. Yeah. So I think we'll we'll turn it over to you, Michael, to lead us through today. In my exalted position as former chair. Former chair. <laughs> and to welcome our guests, uh, Marvin and Tricia. And uh, you're uh, first on our agenda, so to turn the uh, the meeting over to you for a discussion of Timpanogos uh, Folk Festival. Yes. Thank you. Take it away. We'll just, we'll just take a, take a minute of presentation from them, and then just invite invite questions and responses. Um, first of all, we take seriously any organization that has um, shirts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we got them. Yeah. Well, that's why we got them. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to people take. would take it seriously. Um, this is called Bluegrass Roots, the Timpanogos uh, Folk Festival. We've been, uh, this is our, this will be our sixth year. Just a, a quick history. We started, uh, we were at, I think we were at uh, Timpanogos High School uh, football stadium. And uh, we had uh, a, a, a prominent uh, mandolinist from the Northwest named John Reichman came down with his band and headlined a concert for us there. Uh, and then the next day, they were going to Friday night, and then the next day, we met at, uh, I think we were the Tempanogos Park, the, where the Storytelling Center was. Yeah, the story We met there Park. for uh, workshops and uh, and jam sessions and a chance for people to play in an open mic situation. I mean, people who have just attended the, the event. The next year we had- That was, all, that was free to the public. That was free. That was free. It was very before. successful. We had, the, we had the performing artists all come and they were just, they loved interacting with, with the people and the kids and the adults could ask them questions as they, you know, they jammed with them and- they yeah, people about people who wanted to people who wanted to kind of specialize in learning about uh, banjo, they met with the banjo guy down in one corner. People who were wanted to learn about mandolin, they stayed. People who wanted to learn about singing, they with the singer over here. Anyway, it was pretty effective. Um, the next year we had uh, as our headliner, I think we're over at Mountain View this time. We had uh, John McEwen, who was. Uh, Kind of a national legend. He was a he's a, a, a folklore folk music champion, and uh, he was with uh, the original Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. He mm -hmm. brought two or three of his dirt band friends and others to to play for us, and uh, and he was terrific. And he he conducted a little uh, Q and A uh, in in that environment right there in that little pavilion. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next year, uh, and then and then the next morning, we met at I think Canyon Glen Park uh, for a few hours with workshops and, and jams and and people having an open mic and uh, we had a guitar giveaway. Every year we had a guitar giveaway. Um, third year was uh, Ryan Shoot, our own guy here, and he was uh, <laughs> matter of fact when we talked with. John McEwen, uh, he said, well, who's the opening act? And we told him who the opening act is. He said, well, good, I'm glad it wasn't Ryan Shoot because he was intimidating by Ryan Shoot. This guy who, you know, John McEwen, who plays at the Grand Ole Opry regularly. Anyway, we were impressed with Ryan. Anyway, so Ryan Shoot was the headlining act the next year. The next year we had uh, John McEwen back again. And then last year we had um, as our headliners, uh, Darren and Brooke Aldridge, who are kind of rising stars in the bluegrass world, uh, she she won uh, the Female Vocalist of the Year uh, four years running with the American Bluegrass uh, Association, and their venue right before right before Mountain View High School football stadium was Grand Ole Opry. So anyway, they're rising stars, very nice people. Um, 
But as excited as as we've been to have to, to associate with these national renowned artists, um, from the very get go, the thing that's been most exciting to me has been the uh, up until last year, the morning after event, where uh, people get together, they jam, they get they they swap songs, and and we've we've done some formal kinds of things presentations and workshops but but my favorite uh, uh, my favorite thing has been to see after hours people sitting under trees people that didn't know each other before sitting there with their mandolin banjos guitars whatever kind of swapping songs and and, and, and jamming just spontaneously and for me that's always been the most exciting uh, element of of the festival um, last year we for the first time, put the uh, put all that kind of uh, local artists um, jamming, workshopping kind of stuff in the afternoon, in the Saturday afternoon of the of the performance. So it's a one day thing instead of the morning after with other extra travel. So we had uh, whoop, we had. As he does that, our original vision of a bluegrass festival is more than just a one evening stand, right? And and as we've we've moved ahead on this, this last year was the opportunity to really have more local. Yeah. We've had local bands starting, but not the you know main act. And this last year's uh, situation right here over at Owen Park was able to we were able to call on all these local bands and Sam Payne, uh, whom you may know for this great storytelling ability he has, as well as being Marvin's son. And uh, he was our MC and he filled in the gaps and we had a lot of enthusiasm around uh, bringing in these local groups in the afternoon. And then we had a headliner in the, in the evening. So, so the we're expanding it. The beautiful thing about, about this, when you hear is that we can just stay on the same stage yeah. in the afternoon and go on into the evening. And uh, well, that's that's what we're looking for to do tonight. Anyway, um, my favorite moment last year um, here at the Mountain View was uh, we had this, this amazing, amazing headliner band, the Aldriches. Uh, but afterwards, uh, I was there to kind of them off and, and uh, wish them well and uh, and see that that things got closed down properly and then so people were pretty much gone and then came out uh, came out of the stadium and sitting underneath a sitting underneath a sitting underneath a, 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 a tree on the on the lawn out in front of the rec center were five or six people with instruments just kind of jamming and then, you know, because of the, the fun time they'd had and, and they'd been kind of inspired by the Aldriches. And anyway, that moment, to seeing those people after hours, 11 o'clock at night, sitting on the lawn in front of the, that for me was, that made the whole thing a little bit, even though there had been more exciting kinds of things going on during the day. Um, my son is a videographer and he came in this last summer and just shot a whole bunch of footage and we asked him to cut together a couple of minutes presentation that would not focus on the artist but focus on the audience focus on the participants because we know that that that's something that you guys are kind of most interested in i mean you can buy a ticket and go see headline artists all around but let's Let's take two minutes and look at the effect of, of the event. So we're at the Bluegrass Roots Festival. Summer actually can't begin until Bluegrass Roots. So we're super happy to be here today. It's gonna to be a great lineup of folks. Marv Hamilton and his friends are getting ready to perform. I'm gonna MC for four hours straight for better or for worse. And uh, this is gonna be quite a day. Hey, come back. Hi. 
acid way. To turn another day, which I see so long. Yeah. Someday, someday. These are all different folks. <laughs> and these are audience members. And this is jam at this this juncture. This is evening. What is this happening? This is in the uh, uh, this is the park just south of the Rex Center. The this park, this is at the uh, this is at the high school the football stadium. Hi, folks. We're Darren and Brooke Aldridge. This is our first time here in Utah, and it's a wonderful festival. It was. Orange is a beautiful place, and uh, the audience was fantastic. The view was even more gorgeous, too, and uh, we were just thrilled to be here and hope to come back sometime. Thank you, guys, for making our, our weekend. Thank you. No. Anyway, that's kind of how it feels. Um, Do you have any questions? Yeah. You should have had a lot more people there that on the altars is because they're, you know, they're great. They're hot stuff. Be that advertised that a little bit more. That was an excellent concert. Thanks. Yeah. And you were not the headliner, but you were the sub headliner. <laughs> the opener. The opener. <laughs> the, only, the only time I've gotten paid for being associated with it. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, this year we have we have one, two, three, four, five, six different different mm -hmm. uh, local ensembles playing in the afternoon, and uh, that little dance segment that was just there's so much spontaneity. One of the bands, uh, is a local group called the Copper Kettle Band, out of BYU, they. Uh, they just spontaneously came up with, I mean, some people were kind of itching to move. And so the band just said, well, let's have, let's, let's have a dance contest, you know? And then people got up, that lady did, and that little girl wow. did. Yeah. Anyway, the little girl won, even though we may not have danced as well. I see, more up yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, one, one of our great uh, desires is to bring this kind of music both bluegrass and folk. And that's why we actually call it the Bluegrass and Folk Festival. Back into our environment, into the families. And it's a real family oriented uh, event in a, in a time and me as I have 20 grandkids and three great grandkids and all live in the Valley. And uh, there is power in good music, good stories. You all remember the John Denver song, Music Makes Pictures and Often Tells Stories. Do you remember that? And, and all of it's magic and all of it's true. I feel like so much music I'm hearing at the gym or other places is not, doesn't fit that category anymore. Yeah. And bringing that back, I think kids, young adults, families love that kind of music. And that's the purpose of one of the, the passions behind us wanting to get this festival. It's still in the roots category, I think a little bit, but we are trying to grow this into a big tree mm -hmm. and um, want to have this kind of music more, this area known for it, something that is very accessible for families. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel like we're providing that music as far as 
advertising you've mentioned, um, one of the barriers has been in the past that we have not known our venue. We haven't been able to finalize our venue until rather late in the game. And then getting that word out has been more difficult. And uh, we would like to be able to establish a permanent more venue that, yeah, everybody knows that this is where we're going to have it this year. Um, and they can get used to one thing that's wonderful about this venue is if it's a little bit cool, they can sit out in the sun. If it's hot, they can sit in the shade. And um, the football stadium, although it's got, we has a beautiful backdrop sitting on, on a metal bleachers, bleachers um, doesn't it's really, it, it gets, it, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't work as well. So we're very excited about being able to use this venue this year. Um, our hope, uh, because you have implemented, the Sortie of Warm has implemented a no ticket rule, mm -hmm. um, it makes it no, no, you know, we can't charge for that event. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons we're here is hopefully to get a little bit of financial help with this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Marvin and I and Rich Thurman, who actually is in, he actually started the uh, Renaissance Fair that you may all know about. The first year was right up here in the Storytelling Park. I think Marvin and I were both part of that first year and you're still doing it. But that that has grown into quite a big thing. And um, just outgrew Thanksgiving Point. Yes, it's outgrown Thanksgiving Point. And again, it's good family fun. We've, we've drawn on some of the funds for that to help pay for this in the past. Marvin, Rich, and I just donate our time. And uh, uh, we are just passionate about bringing this kind of music, not only to families, but with the two universities. We have a lot of, and, and all those that are attracted, we have a lot of singles that are looking for something to do. And, and giving them an option of, of really fun, clean, wholesome music is, uh, I'm just passionate about. And I don't know how you all feel about that, but I see some of the really heads. And, and so we want to keep growing this and, uh, and we're hoping to get some funds to do that. Some of the artists, some of the local artists, uh, national artists haven't been particularly, but local artists, are uh, uh, excited enough about the prospect of this becoming a, 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 an annual mm -hmm. fixed thing, um, have uh, often played for a lot less than what they usually play for. I mean, this lady, the first, uh, Kate McLeod, she's been doing this for a long time. And uh, she typically pulls down a whole lot more than what we're paying. But the, uh, she wants to. She wants to build. She wants to just go forward. And, anyway, and I'll mention that Sam also. Um, oh yes, yeah, goes is, usually goes for a lot more than he. Yes, yeah, Sam. He, is, he does, you know. Giving us so, the friends and family rate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So are you wanting to get a care tax then? And, right. Yeah. Here's what we um we have a budget of about eighteen grand. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's primarily that's for sound uh, because the sound is very important. Yeah. Um, that's for artists uh, to bring in these name people from outside. Mm -hmm. um, we bring back John Reichman again uh, that we had first year, and then uh, and then a fellow who has roots here but has built a name for himself in Vermont and does a lot of a lot of gigging in the East. Mandolin player that's uh that's got a band. He he's coming out to be to open for John Reichman. But um to pay for them, to pay our local bands more modestly, um, to pay for the sound. To have a green room, you know, we have our own tents that we put up and we have volunteers, mm -hmm. but we, we do have to provide some food and water and right. Stuff like that. from the sun, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, housing for the out-of-town people that we bring in. 
So we've got this budget of about 18 grand. It's a little bit fluid because day to day we'll have somebody uh, present themselves as a possibility to play and we'll say, well, okay, and what would you, what would it take to have you do that? Oh, maybe a couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that just kind of bounces the, mm -hmm. the total around a little bit. Now, have you got your applications in yet? Because, uh -huh. yeah, so you're applied, you're going for about 18. Well, that's our total budget. Um, you have. A, I don't know that we would expect fair people to come up with with that. Are you a nonprofit? Totally. Five hundred one c three. I mean, not no, we're nonprofit on purpose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but are you guys a five hundred one c three? Yeah. Okay, so you can go for the higher amounts. Um, yeah. Well, no problem. Yeah. Well. The, in the past, we've had, we've never had, we've never exceeded, even though our budgets have been higher, we've never exceeded four grand in ticket sales. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've had to, we, we've, we've had uh, Sorensen grants to help cover that shortfall. Um, we've had, uh, we've had to rob the Renaissance Fair uh, funds to, Cover some of the losses, but but we the whole thing Utah is under Valley Arts. Yeah, the, the organization. No, the whole um the, the umbrella organization is called Utah Valley Arts. Mm -hmm. it used to be called Utah Valley Fine Arts Council, but <sighs> after a few years, uh, sort of realized that we're not really doing what an arts council does. We're just kind of mm -hmm. sponsoring two or three events mm -hmm. a year, and so uh, changed it to Utah Valley Arts, and that's the five hundred one three C three. But the board of the Utah Valley Arts Council is more and more reluctant to see Renaissance fund, Renaissance Fair funds siphoned off for other events. And mm -hmm. So we're trying to make it more independent. Freestanding. Right. So the you're at, how much are you asking for in your care tax application? I honestly don't know. Uh, Rich Thurman who is in Hong Kong, I the brain of it all. He's in Hong Kong right now and, and regretting that he couldn't be here. No. But he um, he said, uh, I, I, I just kind of was double checking with him saying, this is exactly what we asked him for from these people. And he said, oh, it's all in the application. Why not? <laughs> you? And, and, the, and they, they, they all will have read the application. No. So, you have that? Um, I'll see if I can pull it up. He had he had the, the expectation mm -hmm. that that care itself would not be uh, would probably be willing to do something between thirty five and forty percent of the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, it was five grand to seven seven fifty kind of thing, uh, but uh, or seventy five hundred. But mm -hmm. that was just his his ballpark. He gotten that impression from somebody. I think you could go for the whole thing. Really? Store. Well, we'll take, we, we'll take the money and run. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you got a good justification for it and you can document all the expenses you're going to have, and if the care uh, committee feels like it's worthwhile, then just ask for it. Don't you think, Keith? There is a, you can only ask for a percentage of your operating budget, you can't ask for everything. So if their budget is 18, they couldn't ask for 18. They'd have to owe. Oh, what is the percentage? I want to say it's 40%. That would, that would does be that common. apply to mid-majors too? I think so. I'll look good though. That was that was in the number that Richard shared with me. Was I thought the many in the mids, they could even get 100% of their program or project or performance. No, maybe up to 10,000. Maybe you up to ten thousand. Yeah, I thought it was not on the percentage. I guess. And if we had ten thousand. We'd just jump up and down. Mm -hmm. No, Does the Freedom Festival give you some money. No. No. It, but no, um, the only thing they give us is a page to advertise. Really. Well, that's something else you should definitely ask for because you guys have been doing this for how long? Six. This will be the sixth year. Yeah, I used to be asking for money over there from the Freedom. Festival because you're an official freedom festival of, of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you should be asking. 
for money. And well, I'm, kind of. It sounds like you're the money doesn't go both ways there. So it, it's another organization. It's not the festival. Yeah, the festival doesn't benefit financially from what we're yeah. doing. Well, we've been in the red, you know. But there's who, does, who has a festival benefit financially for any of us? No, we don't. They don't. <laughs> they just, we just mm -hmm. put on a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we and they pay for a part of it, you know. That's right. So That's it looks like it Richard's put in for seventy five hundred. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, we can certainly, as a council, we can give our recommendation to the commission or care commission or whatever they're called. You know, we we don't have say over that who gets what, but we could certainly give a suggestion or whatever <laughs> that'd be great that'd be the, the, the city has already offered um a number of different kinds of of, of benefits to us that would have cost money mm -hmm. and it's not having to get our own stage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and having the sound in one place is yeah. is yeah. our first year of being able to do that so i missed that part are you coming to this part mm -hmm. yes. yeah what's the date for the stage 22nd yeah. of June. Yeah. yeah, that's all reserved and, and set up. Uh, yeah, you're an official Freedom Festival. That's a Saturday? Saturday. All right. Yeah, so Festival we start at two and go till as late as oh. they let us. It's, I think it's there's some sound restrictions after 10. Yeah, 10. Yeah, we'll so, be by 10. You get the Freedom Festival to pay half and the care tax to pay half and fund it, you know? Well, the very next one of those meetings will definitely say. Is that the place to raise it at the, no. at the chair meeting? You raise it, just go right to Jim Evans. Okay. And say, we need this to be a paid, we need to ask for your, your money. You might not be able to do it this year. Uh -huh. It may not be all budgeted out, but next year for sure. Okay. Yeah. I there, shouldn't speak for them, but I mean, this is, you guys are an official thing, you know? Well, I'll, I'll contact them and see what the, mm -hmm. uh, when this is yeah care tax and freedom festival see i'm a uh, cries of freedom i've been doing this for 16 years yeah freedom festival pays out i mean i started out paying we started out paying our own for the first couple of years and then they started paying a little bit and they said well you're a good thing we we want you part of our city and part of the freedom festival and i think you're the same well we've kind of proven uh, you have our, ourselves over the yeah. first five years and 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 people from the freedom festival have attended and mm -hmm. enjoyed and you know he preys upon us and so so maybe yeah. that's an avenue that we should absolutely you were you were ticketed up at um what was the high school Mountain View. not yeah. no before oh, no, Tip Novus. Tip Novus, yeah. and you were ticketed at Mountain View as well. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna ticket this year. No it's not it's not permitted. Right. The the city of Orm does not permit it. Yeah it's because it's hard. I don't know that part. Is that because it's at this stage or? Yeah, you can't sell they, tickets. They did not do tickets it. Right. No. Okay. So along, along with that, if I could bring it up, we would like to have food vendors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering what your rules are about having some trucks, you know, mm -hmm. some food trucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that kind of stuff. And that sure. that's permitted. Mm -hmm. We've got people there afternoon through evening. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to be able to keep them there. So there's one oh. other thing too, um, and this that is a simple one. Then I'll bring up the more complex one, which is um, at a, at a couple of the festivals we've had some booze. We had a fellow who makes he's from Logan, but he makes man, he makes uh, man, oh, mountain man. dulcimers. He, dulcimers. He makes mountain dulcimers. Mm -hmm. He makes some other instruments. Um, I don't know if I can get him to come back. He's older and he's he does it for fun, but boy, he was good. And having a couple of other arts mm -hmm. booths, people that attend this will often like, you know, some wow. crafts yeah. and some um that kind of arts. I don't know if you allow that because that would be a money-making enterprise wow. for that We're booth. There. Yeah, we do that too. Okay. Now, you guys can also go to these food vendors and these other vendors and say, you know, we since we're kind of the event here and you're here because of us, we would like 10% or some percentage of the gross. Yeah, we've considered that. I think until we have a more steady number of people, we can say you can count on, you know, 
500, 600 people coming. Um, yeah. If it's, it, it is a risk for them right now. We, we're we trying to find that perfect balance. Well, but yes, I'm aware of that. If, what is the normal attendance? We've had, a, okay, you saw pretty much, that, okay, well, I don't know when that shot was taken, but yeah, but that was that was the attendance at the afternoon thing. That would be multiplied by six, seven, eight, nine, ten at the, yeah. at the evening. And it, evening. It's hard to know exactly because we have given away tickets. Uh, we had a couple of years. We had a, a children's choir. Um, were you were you there? No, that, bring, that brings them in, though. <laughs> yeah, it brings them in, but though all those people expected free tickets, and they're all their families. Uh, mm -hmm. They, you know, I'm the mom. I I need to be uh -huh. in here for free. Um, so I'm not sure. I I'm, I don't feel confident people. about that yet. Two three hundred. Yeah, but we could have a lot more. Oh, yeah. yeah, we should have a lot more. We we should. We feel like it's a very it's a high. We, high quality yes. event. One, one of the one of the challenges is that we've bounced around. I mean, it was Tiff and August, then it was Mountain View, then it was Tiff and August, then it was Mountain View, then it was Mountain View again, and 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 then mm -hmm. you know the, the the other activity was the morning after, the morning after, the morning after, and then the afternoon of, mm -hmm. and and so we haven't really settled into a rhythm, yeah, you know, an, right. a, a, yeah. an expectation right. rhythm. We we need that rhythm. And as you know, if you picture a festival, you don't usually picture yourself sitting on metal bleachers. No. no. And, and what we found, um, and our experience, it can change. I remember one year it snowed on the 4th of July. Do you remember that? During the parade? Yes, it did. Um, but generally, it's very hot. And so people stay out until the, the performance starts. They sit down, and then they leave. We're trying to get away from that and create I this, you know, this, we, I feel like people, especially since the, the pandemic, uh, we need to associate with one another. We need community. Mm -hmm. And we're trying in this format to create more of a community. And so, yeah, Marvin's right. We we don't have our rhythm yet. We're, and, pretty, uh, we're pretty excited about the idea, actually, at first. When we found out we couldn't charge tickets, we thought, well, that complicates things a lot. Yeah. But then, you know, as we began to live with that, yeah, I'm pretty excited about how people who don't have to pay, you get who more are, people who just come to the park <laughs> for some completely other reason to kick a mm -hmm. kick a soccer ball around, yeah, see this event going on. It, oh my goodness, what? Gosh, people in the audience have instruments too. What what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. And and just just really kind of raise a lot of consciousness about about what what can happen um, um, musically and in a festival environment that that's wide open. I think that's going to be real exciting to watch. I think you just build it up with care tax money, 50% care tax, 50% Freedom Festival, make some money on the food vendors and the other vendors, and you're covered. You just build like. from there. That's what I would do. There. That's what my event has done for 16 years. Oh, has it? Okay. Yeah. And it works. It works great. Everyone's happy. You had a question? Can, uh, I know you, you say you can't sell tickets, but can you take contributions? I don't know. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, like donations? In yeah. the park? Yeah, donations. Yeah, I think so. I don't, there, I don't think there's a rule against that. Yeah, I mean, I I was involved with a an outdoor Shakespeare festival for ten years, which was nonprofit and free, free whatever, and uh, they basically said suggested donation ten bucks. Uh, it was a big, you know, big production, so that was legit, legit, uh, and not everybody would give. And then at the end, they had. Uh, Bunch of kids with buckets around the around at the end. <laughs> so people on their way out when they saw that's, something that yeah, they thought that's okay. Oh, well, let's keep yeah. this going, you know. And they would drop a couple of bucks in the bucket. And um, look, that's allowed. We'll certainly do it. Yeah, really, yeah, we talked about that, but we didn't know if it was allowed. I'll, I'll so find I'm out. Really where, was, where was where was the what's that? Where was the festival? The Shakespeare. It was in uh, the New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But uh, you know, so if if you're spending most of your uh, your budget 
on getting the thing going this year, then maybe those contributions would, would give you some seed money right. for the following year. You know, yeah. you can sock it away. Yeah, That's even funny. with our headliners, we've had to say, we've had to plead, you know, we're a small festival and you, know, you don't want to do that forever. <laughs> you know, you want to no. have an abundance mentality and you want to be able to, yeah. they have a great experience when they come here. But um, we did have a big problem with sound a couple of years ago getting into, and that was... Uh, well, we, the, 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 artist, the artist brought their own sound. Yeah, oh, and, and so. that was a problem. Last year we had, if you were there, last year we had a... We didn't get the same professional level in the, the park part yeah, the park as we was. did, and so we had some delays in that for just a little bit. This year we're just going to have high quality sound. It's the same venue. You know, we're not bouncer from a park to a park. Mm -hmm. so, we invite you to come. We hope you'll come. Uh, and then it's free. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, for sure. I think it's a great event. I think we should have it as a community forever. Wow. This is totally wholesome, totally family oriented, totally good. I mean, bluegrass, come on. That's I mean, America through and through. Yeah. You guys just hang hang in there. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're hanging. <laughs> Are there other sponsors? Do you have any other folks sponsoring? You know, uh, it just seems like maybe in the half a dozen twenty five hundred dollar people would uh, yeah, yeah be great to put their logo on a banner and yeah you know, we, we've, we've, had, we, we've uh we've reached out to we, a few. We've reached out to one actually. Well, and I have to. In the previous five years, we've had uh, best in music. Yeah, has yeah, been yeah. advertised as the, the the sponsor and the Freedom Festival and Best in Music. Mm -hmm. uh, but Best in Music's contribution has been the free guitar that we give away. Yeah. And, and Which they don't even pay which for. Which they don't even pay for. <laughs> they, 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 they talked to the Teton Guitar Company and said, this would be a good way to have the guitar in your breath. <laughs> anyway, so so we're actually, I mean, we, we love them. But we're actually uh, looking for maybe Bert Murdoch, for example, to to uh, throw uh, cash, throw cash at it, cash. cash at it, and and giveaways of uh, gift certificates to uh, Bert Murdoch because you know a hundred dollar gift certificate from Bert Murdoch costs them fifty bucks. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So kind of split their sponsorship between actual cash and and what appears to be a great value, but is not a great value. So it's a great value for the winners, but mm -hmm. it doesn't cost for very much. Okay. We're kind of eating up your time here. Yeah, I think we got it. Hey. I think we got it. We're totally in support. I am. I don't know about everyone else. I think everyone here is great. And did my granddaughter sing for you last year? Yes. Will she sing for us again? Maybe. If she's around. Yeah. You, uh, I'll talk to you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, we'll, you. we'll let you go. But uh, thank you for okay. your attention. Yeah. Time. Ah. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, we did. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, thank you. That's right. Yeah. So should we, <laughs> since since I'm obligated to report, um, shall I just uh, tell Rich that you guys are recommending to the care people that they do whatever they can? Yeah. But we don't, like Adam said, we don't have a lot of say. Yeah. But we have some say, right? Yeah, and we can help with your advertising and yeah. you know, other things too. Fantastic. Yeah. We'll be back to you. Uh, well, we'll be back to see what the care people say, of course. Mm -hmm. But we'll, to, talk, we'll come back to you about all that other kind of stuff. Sounds good. But definitely go to the Freedom Festival. They could be paying you guys out of your expenses. Yeah. I'm going to that next meeting. so And maybe not this year, but next yeah. year for sure. Put a bucket in there. Oh. I don't know why uh, Rich has. He's big. Uh, yeah, thank you. More than a buck. They, they want this as an event, and you're going mm -hmm. broke. They need to make sure it stays here because they make a lot of money on stadium with fire. Yeah, they, they do. can pay you guys some money. Absolutely, yeah, the community makes money too. Everybody does. Yeah. yeah. Okay.
Thanks. Thanks so much. Adam. Adam. Yeah. And is it your name? Yeah. Trisha's story. Oh yeah, Trisha's story. All right, I'm gonna send you a text and maybe we'll get your granddaughter again. Yeah, I think you have a number. I do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks right. for yeah. Thank you so much. My goodness. What? Oh yeah, let's take this too. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Okay. We lost our former chair who was conducting the meeting. Oh, yes. so we'll go to our... oh, what happened? oh yeah, this one's here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a former, former chair, right? And now your vice chair. Well, well I, was. I, I vote for everybody as new chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barb. So we'll just turn it back over to you, Adam. Okay, so uh, the next one, strengthen neighborhoods through the arts. Yeah, yeah, so Leah's put some stuff together, so we'll... Okay. That's just things to think about. Here we have a piece of paper in front of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh -huh. I think this goes right along with what... Is there uh -huh. one? Give to that. Put more on this person. <laughs> right. I think this goes right along what, with kind of some of the issues that they were bringing up, which I think. So first of all, does anyone, does everyone agree that America is experiencing a loneliness epidemic? Everyone's aware of this, right? Yeah. It's been in the newspaper, no. um, especially post uh, um, pandemic. Um, no. I, this may be, um, you are all at a different time of life, so maybe you're not aware, but mm -hmm. American culture has made parenting harder, which is contributing to the oh. high birth rates. No doubt. And you here we are. Homes. Here we are in Family City, USA, and so we are in, interested in that, right? Um, uh, is it accepted that a sense of local belonging strengthens democracy? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, I this is just an anecdotal thing. Like there, those first three, you can look all over the, the internet, go to lecture, <laughs> read the newspaper and stuff. Um, anecdotally, my experience has been I am a member of the predominant religion, is a devout member, but my experience. Um, with others has been that if you are not a member of the predominant religion, you can sometimes feel isolated, especially because our ward or our stake often is a is the social mechanism for a lot of us, right? And so if you're not part of that, then it feels like I'm the only one who's not part of that, right? And I I don't think that's universal, but I I've, I've heard probably ten different people. It just happens. It does. It just happens. <laughs> And we only have limited, we have limited capital, right? If we're already investing in our own families, our own board, our own stake, it's mm -hmm. hard to just invest in the random person. Mm -hmm. And then that the arts are intrinsically a means of bringing people together. So do we all agree with all these statements? Okay. Then I propose that we consider ways to use the arts in Orem as the Orem Arts Council to strengthen our neighborhoods. Specifically, like I live in the Heatheridge neighborhood, which I did not know that my neighborhood had a name until I was actually at Pleasant Grove Junior High. And they have, for a sporting event, one of my kids doing sports, and they have this whole map of the Pleasant Grove neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. and they're labeled and named. And I thought, oh, I wonder if Orem has that. And they totally do, mm -hmm. right? Which they kind of line up with the stake. Yeah, least. they do. Do they line up exactly or? They used to. It used okay. to be like exactly the same. Karen and yeah. Lawrence. Right, yeah. Northridge yeah. and mm -hmm. Hunt, right? Yeah. Windsor. Uh -huh. If I know the stake, then I know the yeah. neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. But that's it's not true anymore. So if you do a new name, you have to do a new name in the town of Valley. New for a state or for a state line. Okay. So Which is fine because that's kind of what we're hoping mm. to break away from, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um so just, just going off of what they just said, for example, so here, let me read this. So possible actions, and I left space because, and I'm not saying let's do this. I'm just saying, like, thinking about yeah. how can we strengthen neighborhoods in order to combat the loneliness, the parenting difficulties, the not having a sense of belonging. So my husband is a constitutional lawyer. I told you guys about this already. Mm -hmm. um, he's a professor at BYU. Mm -hmm. And thinking about this, I thought, well, doesn't, we have this, huge issue of tribalism, right? You're either a Republican or a Democrat and the other side is a demon, right? Well, if we make, oh, I'm a Heatheridge citizen, <laughs> now am I at, at odds? Like, am I creating gangs? And, we, yeah. and he said, no, that's actually, the problem is people only have one identity right now, right? Mm -hmm. You have 
because our families are breaking down, our religion is breaking down, our the, the whole bowling alone, right? That book. Like, yeah. People are not part of volunteer organizations anymore. Like all that's going down. Social media is a big part of this, right? Like we're on the internet all the time. Um, but part of it is just we if you're parts of if you're a member of many different communities, right? My religion, my family, my bowling league, my then you're interacting with different people and it's not just I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat, right? You're, and then so it reduces the tribalism, actually. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I was gonna say that. Anyway, okay. So possible actions: we can reinforce neighborhood identity at Orm events like Summerfest, like the All Together concert that they did last time at library events, at parades, right? Like Heatheridge sits here, mm -hmm. whatever at mm -hmm. at Steer Productions, mm -hmm. Productions. I don't know, like Discounted Night, or everyone come on this night, your neighborhood's gonna be there, right? Um, we can strengthen neighborhood contribution and facilitation of common childhood experiences like music lessons and sports. So like right now, th this issue just came up. Someone asked me who our violin teacher was. And I happened to know that our violin teacher is right around the corner from this person. And it would make her life so easy to go to this violin teacher but I personally am struggling. I don't think my daughter is going to be on the stage at Carnegie Hall if she continues with this violin teacher. I need to get her the better violin teacher that I drive to Salt Lake for, right? Mm -hmm. But that makes my life harder, right? But <laughs> so so should I should I tell the this mom who wants to get her three kids into violin? Well, here's the one around the neighbor around the corner. They can walk there, right? You're going to be running into her all the time, like this sense of community. Or should I tell her? I mean, what, what's actually the likelihood that your child's going to be performing in Carnegie in Carnegie Hall, right? It's, it's actually not there, but, and just in case. So I already felt like this, but then my husband got me this book for my birthday. But it's all about how our culture made raising kids much harder than it needs to be. And like the first chapter is don't fall into the travel sports trap, <laughs> but you do not need to be spending all your money and all your time driving to St. George for baseball tournaments, right? Or soccer tournaments or whatever. It's just yeah, yeah. start your little league. Yeah. And he's talking about declining birth rates. Like people have, he's in a suburb of DC and people have two kids because that's all the time you have, all the time and money to be driving to Salt Lake for Carnegie Hall, right? But it doesn't need to be that way, right? Good moms. What? Yeah. Good right. Moms. If, if they even have that. Right. And Maybe. yeah. And he kind of talked about that. Um, but point being, and I loved this, like what they were talking about, like the morning after, um, there's so much talent. There's probably talent everywhere, but in Orem, um, unbelievable amounts of talent. And they're in my neighborhood. I know that. Well, I live next to, right next door to Roger and Melanie Hoffman, who are church composers, amazing people. Dallin Bayless, the opera singer, he's behind our, like Jim Evans, as, as far as just like like administrative talent he, yeah. he was just really released as our state president right like and i don't think that's unique i don't think you know uh, roger's daughter is balanced well no really? that's a different roger oh, oh different but, roger? but you're right yes Dallin's, Dallin's there Dallin's is a roger hoffman. hoffman who is down bayless's father exactly yeah. <laughs> and he lives up in heather Ridge. yeah they said they'd get their mail uh, crossed all the time <laughs> uh, but but yes just i i, I don't think my neighborhood is unique, right? But I don't know who everybody is, right? Like it's taken, yeah. we've lived here 10 years. It's taken a long time. I still don't have any violin teachers in my neighborhood, even though I'm sure there are, I'm sure there are. And I do have the advantage of, I have a stake directory or, you know, yeah. but if I'm not a member of the church, then how do I get that, right? right. Um, okay, established means for the neighborhood to provide some of the services and support that the ward or stake does. Um, connect the elderly and the young in meaningful ways along neighborhood lines. That's kind of about the, one is the loneliness epidemic, one is the um, just helping with common childhood experiences. So there's a guy in our ward who is a fantastic guitarist. And he said, you know, I think your son would really pick up on the guitar. He's obviously really musical. Can I teach him guitar? Would that be Mike Dowd? <laughs> you know I think he is in our state. Yeah. He is. He lives yeah. in Henry. Yeah. yeah. But it's but it's, it's not he. His name's Larry Arnett. Um, I don't think he professionalized ever, but um, but that was amazing, right? And he did it for free because he's retired and just like we're between missions. I don't have anything to do. My grandkids are far away. 
Can I teach them guitar, right? I don't think that's unique to my to my neighborhood. I think that is there, right? Um, so that's connected to the other. Okay, so possible actions. Neighborhood shirts, hats, or other swag, like he said, right? <laughs> we, we take seriously our conditions that have shirts, right? Like that promotes a sense of identity, right? And I think it could be like a contest or whatever. And I I so this is a very busy month. <laughs> and it's like, do you want to talk about this this month? And it probably would have been better not to, but I think the summer is a time for gathering and we already have these things in place. And a lot of it is just, let's throw out a call for a neighborhood shirt design. And then you have to pay for it, right? Like, like the person, like it's not free or anything. This is this is all just like administrative putting people together. It's not changing things. It's more about communication. Right. Um, I did think so block, Block parties, slack, because the neighborhood, when I was looking at the map, it seemed pretty big. I don't know how much, like, attendance you would get, but if you had, like, a block party and these groups that are already getting care taxes, right, these, like, performing groups, mm -hmm. and they want to get exposure, right, they could, yeah. if we want to have a pipe band at our yeah. block party, yeah. that'd be so fun. <laughs> that make your pipe party, party go uh, <laughs> nuclear, I mean, <laughs> I know. Talk about that for a while. Right? Yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome. Um, and I think just increase better and targeted communication for city offerings. So I was telling Michael, um, uh, he. So we lived in Germany for a while, and I felt like Germany was one year, and they you have to register with the city. And I was best informed my one year living in Germany with what was available for my children. I think because they are so just on top of things about, okay, your kids are this age, these ages, okay, then yeah. this would be important to you. And and you could even just like, not there, but for us, you yeah. Say, yeah, I'm interested in sports, I'm interested in music. I have to give kids this, these ages, right? Or, or whatever. And then the city knows, and people keep saying, how do we get the word out? How do we get the word out? How do we get the word out, right? Um, it could be targeted Oh, you signed up for this. And I think it should change if there's some sort of function to do this. Every three years, every five years, like my circumstances are changing, right? When I first sign up, I don't have teenagers. I don't care about that, right? Or we're all about music and dance. Now we're trying to be a sports family, right? Like, um, Will they just email you stuff? Germany? Like the Germans, yeah. Um, I Yeah, and then just in the mail. And they'd send you physical stuff too. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, This was 10 years ago. We live in 2011. I'm a, now I'm a senior. Uh, I go to the Senior Citizens Center. They are bursting at the seams with cool things, okay? Yeah. All kinds of arts and things. I I think possibly we could utilize the Senior Citizen Center after hours, too, if they would agree, you know, because there's a lot. Of, For like lot classes of and community center type stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're trying to get Sharon Elementary as well. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be a great community yeah. center. Definitely. Yeah. Or I was thinking about buying it. Or leasing it. I don't know if the school district's interested in selling, but huh. we're trying to get access to it at least. Yeah. yeah. Didn't they just reinvent and <laughs> restart the neighborhood <clears throat> groups? Yeah. It's being reinvigorated through a, my. it's called My Hometown Initiative. So it actually goes along with a lot of what you're talking about. How do we get them together with, it's probably already and happened. how do we get it in every neighborhood? Yeah. And that's kind of like what's happening. That's what they're, well, trying, they're to trying to do, yeah. But yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. But it'll take. Um, it's being kind of. It's a partnership with the church, and so it needs to take, like you were saying, it needs to step outside of that as well. Yeah. You know, so the basic structure is being set up by the church and the city, and then we just need, you know, somebody to help us take it one step farther. So is there someone talking about art specifically? Oh, I don't think I can. So like their thing. So I have a violinist who is learning classical violin, but she, every time she gets a fiddling song, she just goes crazy, but <laughs> loves it. She Not loves that. the fiddling songs. And so if I, I'm totally planning to go to this thing <laughs> and hopefully it's like, oh, and here's a look, it's, it's, it's really intuitive. Fiddling is actually where it's just like patterny patterns. Not that you have to, not that there's no skill involved, mm -hmm. but she yeah. could learn some fiddling songs in just a minute, right? Yeah. From these people. And if, it, if their neighborhood was there, if it's like, oh, and you live two streets over from me, even though you're not in my ward, oh, 
can we continue this, mm -hmm. right? But if it's a random person who like, lives across the, the way, I'm not going to pursue that further. Right. Um, why did I cut you off for this statement? Anyway, so, <laughs> oh, so uh, is the, my hometown, it's, do they have an aspect of, yes, the arts, because the arts is already that we bring together. And we already have a lot going on. Right? Yeah. So I think that would really, and sports, obviously, I could have added a lot about sports, <laughs> but that's not us. But like, even just like a part of Summerfest, a neighborhood baseball tournament, or, right? Like yeah. each neighborhood fields a team. Like that's- Oh, that's fun. That's a great event. In New York, right? Like yeah. Each Do we know how many groups there are? Like if, if we were to- I know they're not with the stakes anymore, but yeah. Windsor and Sharon and, not, and I believe probably, there's nine. There's nine in total. Yeah. Yeah. In the whole city. Yeah, they're pretty big. I was um, part of the neighborhood plan committee. Mm, yeah. For Geneva Heights, Sharon, called the G Hops. Great. <laughs> so, yeah. So is nine, is that too big? Would you want to be even more focused than that? Or I thought, looking at the map, I thought it was, I thought they were big. On the other hand, I don't know how many people are going to be coming, you know? Like, yeah, start big. I think breaking the smaller, it's really popular. Yeah. Down to Heather Ridge. Yeah. If, if it gets yeah. popular. Yeah. 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 You know, and yeah. It, it all comes down to finding a few, for lack of better terms, influencers in each of the neighborhoods yeah. that yeah. can kind of drive it. People who are very connected, people who are very social. And yeah. if you, once you find those people, I think it kind of takes off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I thought as far as like loneliness epidemic or whatever, like, yeah, normally we go to email, but so we were just at the state selling Sterling Scholars Awards night last night. And volunteerism was so prized there, right? And it just like that there are already volunteer organizations, but even at Orem City Youth Council, right? That's right. And they could to so to have a teenager, friendly, kind, volunteer oriented teenager on your doorstep just saying hi come to this thing right yeah like, that's a little more likely to get a response i feel like it's sure. just an email that i'm like i already have too many emails just stay away right. so so great ideas and i i mean it's trying it's trying to get Summerfest kind of on board with this and miss Orem and this neighborhood in action or whatever they're called mm -hmm. now you know and all these groups on board with it's really just getting the mechanism set up, right? Yeah. Then we talk about arts and we talk about rec and we talk about, you know, yeah. But getting the vehicle set up. Yeah. And about, like, why are we doing this, right? Because it's super important. I think all of those are super important, right? And then I always think really big, it'll go viral. Like, <laughs> yes. Lost cities in America will fix all its problems. No more loneliness, no more tribalism. <laughs> Hooray. We're going to save the world. Well, more children being born. Oh, yeah. Who used the, like, yeah. the head of the favorite thing? I know. <laughs> From the council? It's uh, Lene and Jeff are on it. So Lene, who is also on our, our council. Oh, I sad that. She, uh, the book, they have lots of just like policy stuff. No, this is great. Because with my hometown, you know, the only arts related thing they've done is one of the options that you can do in these community centers is offer piano lessons or music lessons, voice lessons, mm -hmm. violin. That's great. That's a great start, right? But I, but I still know about this, yeah. right? Like when, is it because is it it's new or I It's very new, more? yeah. So okay. it's not even, I don't even think the contract signed. Okay, good. Yeah. Cool. But that's the direction we're heading. It's, it's a top priority for the city council. Awesome. And uh, it's starting in kind of central Orem with a, a couple of neighborhoods, and then it's going to grow from there. And but the principles I can be, I think can be applied in every neighborhood yeah. right away. And, oh, yeah, never mind. My hometown, though. My hometown. Like, is there a website? There yeah, a website? so they've, they've got a very successful program in Provo and in Ogden, and there's websites for those cities, and you can kind of oh. see the sort of things they do, because there's a service component where they clean up neighborhoods, they work together to beautify parks and, uh, you know, city uh, parkways. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. They teach uh, English lessons, they teach sewing lessons, they do job training. It's a huge program that does all these great things to help unify the community and beautify the community. It's a cool program. It's the whole community. Yes. It's like the whole city. Yeah. Yeah. Is this, is it sponsored by the LDS church? Uh, partnered. They provide a lot of the, um, it's kind of run by senior missionaries. Okay. Yeah. And so they kind of provide the, the labor and the, the manpower. Uh -huh. And the cities kind of help with the organization, getting the word out. Mm -hmm. And then we provide all kinds of resources for getting the city cleaned up. And they were doing something called like help you serve or serve 
Oh, just serve. Just serve. Just serve. Is it kind of like that? A little it's bit? way more intense than that. Right. Yeah. Are they still doing just serve? Uh -huh. that yeah, just serve is where you can sign up for volunteer opportunities, right? That's a good place to go if you want to serve in the community. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of projects on there mm -hmm. that you can just sign up for. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Save so I don't know what, like, how to start. I guess, like, contact my town or something. Mm -hmm. well, it seems yeah. Like find, yeah, finding a way to integrate what we want to do here with arts into my hometown, I think it's the best vehicle. Because yeah. that's the future for the city is that program. Yeah. But could we identify, sorry, I don't, I know we're done, but do you think of ways to use Summerfest as, a, like who would, who would say, okay, t-shirt design contest or, or whatever, like who yeah. would say that? We could do that just from the city perspective. I think that's an amazing idea. Just like put it in. We just put it out on, on social media, on the newsletter, okay. you know. Those nine areas uh -huh. have a contest in each nine area. And we have mm -hmm. like, emailed lists for each neighborhood mm -hmm. so we could do it specifically like hey heather ridge you know we're doing a design contest for for you guys please submit your designs by this date yeah you'll vote on the winners so yeah we have the everyone's kind of broken down we can contact the neighborhoods individually which i liked when you were talking about targeted communication i think it's more effective yeah 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 so you get a design and then they can order t-shirts from mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some companies where like you put your you load up your designs and then when somebody wants a mug or a mouse pad or a shirt or a hoodie yeah. they just order it and then the company sends it to them yeah yeah i think it's a good idea to find one person in every area who's going to be kind of the owner so they kind of own that well what's great is we already have two people in every area that have signed up to be like a neighborhood leader oh there you go awesome. yeah so we could start with them yeah yeah, yeah. so maybe so i i think saying for Summerfest, right? Like, uh -huh. wear your neighborhood shirt to summer. Because, so I mentioned this to someone who had um, moved from Pleasant Grove, uh -huh. and she said, oh yeah, totally. Like, I was totally aware that I was from Monkey Town, and when we <laughs> go to whatever city events, they'd like have it sectioned off or something, like Monkey Town sits here, you know, and then you're seeing the same people and like making friends with these people. I wonder if we could pull that off on the parade. That'd be amazing mm -hmm. to sit with your neighborhood. That'd be incredible. And they can have their own floats in future years. Like, I mean, uh -huh. I've never done a float. They seem really intense. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, in future future years. Years. More floats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. No, I have to make that. <laughs> I mean, a long time ago, all the states did a float. Yeah. Yeah. That's Every what I mean. Like, yeah. they can do like road show, you know, it's yeah. so it's like a big throwback. And that's why, so possible problems are concerned. Safety. Like, I always went with, even though I know this person, this man who was teaching my son guitar. Uh -huh. I'm still going to go to every lesson, right? Uh, like, I'm not just going to. Yeah. And they're, I don't know, predators, good, whatever. Yeah. But one of the things in the book is about family friendly, it's like people are just misanthropes now. They mistrust everybody. Yeah. Like, well, because you can ruin someone's life. Right. Like, you know, so, yeah, we're more aware of it. So, safety, unhealthy sense of competition. But that's my understanding of why church ball was kind of evolved. <laughs> yeah. like, I was pretty unhealthy. <laughs> Resembled the LA riots. <laughs> you know, yeah, my big Samoan friend about knocked out one of the players. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, funny. Okay, That's so. a whole other anger management. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, so I don't really, I'm not familiar with the neighborhood so much, but and exacerbate and exaggerate inherent inequities. Um, it's possible that my neighborhood is just amazing musically right uh -huh. and some other neighborhood is not well, why don't you say adopt people into your that's what i was thinking that we could have like sister neighborhoods right if, like, <laughs> if they're super athletic then we're super musical and there's uh, a, an up. athletic kid here <laughs> who wants What's the family cool. city usa has nine children and these are the nine <laughs> that's a good way to think about it nine children in our yeah family. what's the personality of each one and <laughs> You can even adopt people too. You can just, hey, I'd like to apply for an adoption in yours. You know, <laughs> why not? Right. Don't you got me. Ceremony. Let's make it happen. Anyway, great idea. That's great. Great ideas. Fun. Well, Leah, thank you for putting this together. This is a great discussion. So, yeah, we'll take this and uh, I'll pass it on to the neighborhood commission. They're the, the ones that represent each neighborhood. So awesome. And so they can get some of these ideas and then we'll. These papers. And maybe we can meet with them them too, them. just so we can. Yeah. Be part of it. Yeah, this would be a great presentation if we put something kind of formal together yeah. to take to their next meeting. They don't meet as often as we do, but uh, I think this would—they'd really enjoy this. And you mean it, my hometown? No, uh, the neighborhood commission 
Well, is, two is there anything we can do to challenge Summerfest committee this year? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's really close, mm -hmm. but, but is there anything that would be doable? Yeah, I think some year? kind of neighborhood contest or t-shirt thing you can do that, right? Yeah. But we, we could do something just to get people like just to get the idea planted, start thinking about your neighborhood and have some neighborhood pride. Well, oh. even even if every neighborhood were to select, have a neighborhood event of their own and select their top two to be part of Orem's Got Talent. Oh, that'd be amazing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that way you've got my neighborhood would win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> only your top two though. <laughs> and it can't be professional. Down Bayless is out. <laughs> I don't say so many anymore. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> On like every other year. But, like, but I mean, you might end up with even better forums got talent. Contested. It'd make it way more interesting. Uh-huh. Yes. And, the, and if that's part of the introduction, they're from this neighborhood. And, and then you'll share. The, the best of the best of that neighborhood. And, yeah. And I think even just from a city perspective, we could talk about neighborhoods a lot more. It's like, hey, this thing is happening in the Cascade neighborhood. or Because yeah. we don't ever really think about it outside of like service requests, right? You know, right. but so to try to make that more part of our communication, you know, get people like, oh yeah, I am a member of the you know, Hillcrest neighborhood or whatever. And we had a really cool party. Y yeah, this, <laughs> we had a bagpipe party. Wow. Yeah. So anything we can do to work with Summerfest or the neighborhood group or anything? Yeah. I think it's a great start. Yeah. Okay, just real quick, the last thing we need to do, Alex has moved away. So you remember Alex? He took a job in Texas, and so he is gone, and he was our chair. Gone Yeah. He moved, He uh, sent an email. He said, I leave next week. Goodbye. Like, we'll miss you. Yeah. So we just need a, a new chair and a new vice chair, and I think we have enough to make it happen. Uh, so we don't want a nomination. Uh, what are you, Adam? Well, we, we had selected him as chair and me as vice chair, mm -hmm. so then that we can just start over, I guess. You're currently the chair? What? Not me. Uh, Adam was currently the chair, but it's You're been dissolved. Alex. Oh, Alex was. Alex was the chair. I was the vice chair. Yeah. And then we did that two months ago or whatever. Right. Right. I think uh, you were the vice chair. I nominated Adam for the chair. Yeah, that's what you want. And Tia for the vice chair. Me. It's not Mia. It's not Tia. It's Leah. It's <laughs> <laughs> <To> Leah. <laughs> What were you talking about? <laughs> I have a niece named Mia, so I get to be a Tia. There's only so many letters of the alphabet you could have. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. No, it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to be official business, like she's going to be the vice chair, we have to have her name right. Yeah. I like it. It's an L. I like it. Yes. L I A. Are you both accepting? Sure. I mean, it just I means know. I can duct if he's my hair, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I am having a baby in August. I mean, I'm coming. <laughs> She'll <laughs> come too. But oh, that'll be great. She can be on your quiet. committee. <laughs> vice chair. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I think sure. that's good. I think that's okay. Well, then if everyone's in favor, we'll just make that I, happen. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Chair vice chair. Okay. Great. Just looks exactly Peter's good. doing a great job. Totally yeah. sure Keep it up. Okay. Well, we, you know, everybody wants to be a part of our, our little ORTS organization. You know, that's two meetings in a row where we've had these big pitches. Yeah, I know. Something's going on. Well, do they think we have?